the most important thing about the verbal, and you'll start to see this, is that every verbal question has a right answer on the GRE. When you first start looking at these questions, I know at least for me, when I would look at them, I would be like, that's so arbitrary. How can they possibly say that? Well, you should, if you feel like that, look deeper in the question. Because they're not arbitrary, I promise you that. They'll feel arbitrary, but it's because you're missing something. Um, so, yeah, language is usually highly subjective, ambiguous, and open to interpretation. So usually with language, in, in most of the ways, especially the ways they train you as an undergrad, which is sort of ironic, um, there aren't right answers, right? So most writing, and especially like, like writing, have good writers, right? There's not like, they don't use a super analytical, analytical language unless they're sort of doing science stuff. And I think it's really fostered a lot in, in, um, in undergraduate education, as it should be. I mean, this is a weird, <coughs> very weird instance. But just keep in mind, we're only using the analytical parts of language. There are right answers. Focus on the concrete pieces. Like, connotation is a, it's a feeling, but everyone could agree upon it, right? So it would be like part of the definition of the word. Um, and yeah, just, so just realize that, that you want to think about it almost like how a, like a computer or a mathematician might think about it. You have to really focus on it, because our minds aren't actually designed very well to do this. Um, Normally, when we use language, most of the ways that we communicate things are actually implicated. So, a lot of times we don't really say what we, like if you actually, when linguists actually look at conversations, people don't say anything a lot of times. Like a computer wouldn't understand it. In fact, if you guys have ever programmed in computers, you know that that's a huge problem. Because you can't just tell a computer things, because we're making all these inferences based on other information. Right? The classic example is, um, there's this cartoon, it comes up in all these research papers, where it's a girlfriend talking to her boyfriend, she says, John, I'm leaving you, and he says, who is he, right? Which is sort of nonsense, but our minds naturally and effortlessly fill in all the extra information that we would need to complete and understand what he, what he meant by that, right? Um, my point is, is that we do this unconsciously. We don't realize we're doing it, and we're so used to doing it, and it will crush you on the GRE. It makes it really hard, and so you really have to focus on very specifically what aspects of language you're dealing with and how you're dealing with it, and you have to really, really try sort of not to do it. Um, and if you do feel like a question is subjective, try and understand the structure. Like I said, try and get at the underlying logic of these questions. And if you do, I promise you, I've never seen an ETS visual GRE question that has that is subjective. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically, you just want to try and keep your mind from filling in the blanks. Um, and also, if you if you come across words that we often use in cliches. Right, you might want to define them more precisely because they may not mean what you think they mean in the, in the cliche. Um, so avoid the filling in process. The next bit here is that because our brains are doing this, our brains are essentially looking to extract meaning out of these very impoverished type statements. Right, all the information is not contained in the in the in the what's being said, and our brains are very very good at filling in the rest of it. What that means is, and this is an unconscious process, you're not aware of it happening most of the time. What this means is, don't read the answer choices first. If you read the answer choices first, they can actually get into your thinking without you being aware of it, and they can push it around, which you don't want. So what you always want to do, the first thing you'll notice is look at the words, precisely define them if you can. If you can't, try and figure them out from roots or something, and only then look at your answer choices. That way, the answer choices can't get in there and push it around. You should have a fairly good prediction, at least if you know the, the, the definitions, you should have a fairly good prediction of what you think is going on before you look at the answer choices, and that prevents them from messing with you and biasing you in certain ways.